All right. Let a few, few people get in here. Well, uh, How's it going, Miran? How's it going, guys? Welcome from India. Wow. Good to have you. So, how's it going, number one stunner? <laughs> Good morning, New York. What are you looking for? I haven't looked yet, so we're gonna find out together. Bank holiday volume? Yeah, most likely. That's why I also added Q&A to the live trading. New York. All right, so essentially looking at the monthly, Alex kind of pointed this out to me already, so that's why I see it, but monthly order block, right? We hit it, rejected it. Um, so having that, go down to our weekly, you can see. Took a previous low. Let me switch the lines on this. Took a previous low, mitigated a fair value gap, and now we're inside of last week's range, obviously. And if you're looking at this, where are our eyes going to? Probably this BPR, right? So essentially we have a fair value gap here, right? Even though this candle hasn't formed yet, it's gonna be a fair value gap until it forms, right? There. And there. So ideally, I want to watch this area as a point of interest. We already took last Friday's low on the gap down, and then we're green, right? So we're aiming for this currently. Um, let me look. Dubai, that's sick. Um, let's see. CME's features. I do not know about um, the advantages or disadvantages of data, which data feed you're using, whether CME or your CFD data. I just, I trade features, so that's what um, I use CME data. But knowing that, um, and if you also look at my tweet from yesterday, I said I wanted us to drift higher today. So there's that. And if you look, mitigated this four hour fair value up here and even reached down into this one almost right to the order block right so having that in mind where are we looking well we have a four hour fair value gap right here right we'll label these That one out. We don't need a note for that part. Um, Philippines here. Good to have you guys. All right, so that in mind, drop down to the one hour. And this was our previous day low, right? And the gap down. Gap down. Kind of filled it. And yeah. It definitely looks like we could go higher. Another point of interest here would be this area right here. So this is an order block, which I don't think. So that's our eyes. Keep our eyes open for that. And go down to the 15. And here we can see what Asia and London did. Sweden here. Super glad my videos help you. How's it going, Nick? All right, Kenya too. Wow, we're all over the place, that's sweet. So essentially we got that gap down, right? This isn't aggressive at all, right? Start to kind of broaden the range, right? Broaden information, right? And here we get an aggressive move down, right? taking a low, we get an aggressive move back up. I would have preferred this 
to come a little bit deeper before we go in. Right, and this is uh, London. That's what I would have preferred. Didn't quite get it, but that's just kind of looking at the structure. And looking at the overnight structure, not a whole lot to go off of other than the previous day low. We're kind of just going up, right? So no reason to think short until we get some sort of shift in market structure, which we clearly haven't had, right? See that? So that gives me a bullish bias going into today, right? And what we could see is possible retracement going into New York Open to go long is what my idea would be. Um, this is the 15 minute chart. So we have 15 minutes until open. Um, ideally, I'd be looking at that area as a little breaker. And then this area as our fair value gap pill. It could go lower, but um, Atlantis here. Buy stops above one hour order block. Yeah, there definitely is. But my four hour um, fair value gap covers that. If we get up there, I'll mark it, right? I just try to keep my charts pretty clean. I can't do very much on it. So, so I'd rather just do this here and then I'll change this to. ETR indicator? Yeah, sure. So, essentially, my friend TFO, if you guys haven't checked him out on Twitter, let me, I'll pull up his page real quick. But if you guys haven't checked out my friend TFO right here, he made a BPR indicator, and I will go over that really quick, show you guys. But essentially, I like it better on the lower time frames personally, like one minute, 15 second, just because that's what I normally watch for entries. But if we turn that on, let's see here. And I have to adjust the settings real quick on it. Go like 500. Right. I know it's still working out some kinks, but let's go to the 15 second. I don't know. I have it on my other one. I'll, I'll use it throughout the live stream and show you guys. I don't have the settings where I had them last time. But essentially, it just kind of makes um, some of these BPRs easier to see. Right. But yeah. There's lots of different settings you can mess with. But uh, let's see. Is it available for MT5? I don't think so. I know he made it for trading view and then someone asked for um thinkorswim, so he made it for that. Only works on Bitcoin. I would just I don't know. Ask CFO uh, about that. One second, we're gonna go trading applications only. One bullish and one bearish at a time. Yeah, you might have to adjust it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I used it. What's BPR? I, it's actually my most recent video, if you want to check that out. But going into New York Open, not really expecting a whole lot. Um, this could kind of be our classic buy day, right? Where are you? Excuse me. Did I move up? Fall back into the range, right? Not exactly how it's portrayed, but pretty close. So having that, right, we'll leave our one hour up here so we kind of see what's going on.
that. Bullish for today. Is the indicator called EPR? Yeah, here, I'll pull it up. It's literally just balance price range by trade for op. So right now it has 364. I don't know what, exactly what that means. I think like upvotes or something. Yeah, it's it's accessible for everyone. BPR is balance price range. So um, we are going to look right here. So obviously off the open, like I kind of said, I want to see a slight move down at least. Something like this. Right? Essentially to raid stops to go higher. But worst case scenario, um, let's kind of chill out. Like I said, I don't do a whole lot on Monday and we have a bank holiday today, I think, right? Um, but actually, we'll go here real quick, double check. So no real news today, right? No real news tomorrow besides FOMC number, but we do have PPI Wednesday, CPI Thursday, and core and retail sales. And, well, University of Michigan consumer sentiment. So that is quite a packed week. So here we go. Probably gonna get our little move down. Right. Hopefully it kind of just drifts down to the open and then pops. But we'll see. What do you think about SMT divergence? I I enjoy using them. Um this it's like meant for SMT, right? And so if you look, we have one here at the top, it can kind of be an indicator. So this right here, this price action, let me draw it out for you. This price action didn't take this previous high, right? You see that? This price action did take this previous high. So here's your little SMT divergence, right? Which can be an indication that price may reverse, right? It's usually not the best for um, bull indication, but it's pretty good for confirmation. Boy, it's a bank holiday. What you doing? We're just chilling out, sniper. You want to hop on in the Discord with your crappy internet, and uh, <laughs> you can hop on live if you want if you're bored. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's more of a Q and A today. Just might take a couple trades just to do it. Is this your preferred layout? Yeah. Um, so I have two other monitors, but um, YouTube and OBS and Discord and stuff are on my other monitors. So this is my preferred monitor and just like this. <laughs> so it's not very fun here. So we'll leave that there for now. Ideally, we just popped it here. I'm going to continue lower. If we're open. But if you guys have any questions before we get to uh, New York Open, uh, so is your main strategy ICT? Yes, that is essentially all I use. Some, I am working on a little tiny strategy for scalping Asia sessions, but uh, best way to use BPR, I prefer to have, I prefer to have a higher time frame point of interest, right? So something like hourly high, low, something like that. And I want a lower time frame move above, aggressive move back below, and then I reach into the BPR. So essentially that, right? If I see one today, we'll look at it. You analyze on what time frame and what time frame do you execute? So I, if you watched, we went all the way down from the monthly to the 15, and then I will watch and execute on the, uh, well, I watched the five minute too, but I'll execute on the one minute or uh, 15 second. What does ICT call your BPR? Not exactly sure if that's right. That's just how I've used it. Just watching you. Do you think that? 
I mean, yeah, I, I'm bearish on the higher time frames. I just want the Judas up on the daily. Right, so this is what I would prefer. Right, something like that. Do not have to reach that high? Uh, obviously, don't like to watch volume on this time frame, but. Feel the imbalance below, then go higher. I would prefer to go higher and then break new lows. Uh, would a sell here be considered low probability since we're in the bottom half of the one average? I mean, you'd be shorting in a discount, right? But if we go to this range, right? We're looking in the day, daily range. If we get up into here, we'll be in a, in a premium. Right. So I wouldn't, that's why I'm I, like, I'm bullish right here. Right. I'm looking for buys. Uh, yeah, you took two trades on BPR in London session, US 30. We'll go look real quick. What time frame are you on? That he took it today. Were you what time frame reading? I was gonna try to show some people. You live execute or place buy sell stops at I, I don't know what you mean by live execute or place buy sell stops at a discount or premium. One minute. Said during London. Assuming you are looking at this one right there. Stuff like that. I don't know. I don't want US 30 really. As in live trade or limit orders. I mean I I trade live like uh, market orders? Oh, I mean, it, it depends on the situation. Generally, I'll do limit orders. Sometimes I just don't care enough. I'll just lose the, you know, slippage. Do you trade PM sessions? Sometimes I'm working on Asia scalping strategy. So last night I did trade Asia. I mean, yeah, generally NAS and yes the same right to an extent one is normally stronger and one's weaker right so you can see nas already took this pre previous 15 minute low down while es is holding it so that gives you your relative strength where es is stronger on these higher time frames right um i think live execute yeah okay that makes more sense thanks guys but we're coming up on the open here in two minutes, so. Ooh. Is there a way? What do you mean marking fair value gaps different than I understood? A fair value gap is just a three candlestick pattern. So, like a, find an easy example right here, right? We look into here the high of this candle right doesn't overlap with the low of this third candle that's your fair value gap there's no other way that it does that that um use 8 30 from new york opening yes for annotations i watch and normally trade 9 30 open and that's just because i do better off of 9 30 open right so Ideally, what do I want to see? Well, NASDAQ already took these lows, right? I would like to see ES reach down into this area on the 930 open. Um, it looks like we just got it, so we'll see what happens. Uh, check Discord, TMAC. Oh, sweet. 
nice entries. And you're using a, yeah, here, I'll pull that up real quick. So this is what I just got sent on Discord from Iwas. I don't know if I said the name right, but you can see, right? This is the indicator from TFO. You can see signal these entries here. So he did take that one right there. Targeting previous high, good stuff. So here we go. Getting our little drop down. And this is where we could be looking long. However, definitely could see a larger retracement. So I'm just not really interested in a whole lot today. I prefer to have Monday kind of open up, tell me what it wants to do, and then I'll look for entries. But we'll get a couple trades in, even if it's just, you know, the chat chooses something. Euro USD is a good example right now. Good stuff. Um, did you want to buy and sell model? No, I don't personally, but I did do a live with Sniper. Um, if you go to my previous lives and he talks about the buy and sell models, pretty good in depth. Do you think Wednesday high form today? Weekly highs form today? Because I see it. Um, I prefer to see the high form tomorrow, but you want to enter the 3640 New York suggestions? I mean, that's fair. Running this previous low. The thing is, if we get down there off of open, that's on a pretty aggressive move down. And then we're going to have a BPR right here to the downside. Right. And if we go look here real quick, go to the one minute. Right. Looks a little pretty toppy. Right. Especially NAS here. So I think we're going to fall here. I mean, if you want, I can take a breakout trade for you guys, but I prefer not to. Sometimes I'll take those breakout trades, right? Just take that risk here. But I don't know. Normally when I'm talking, Normally, I'll only take breakout trades if I'm really focused, but you can see NAS is a lot weaker here, right? Already running for these previous lows here, while NQ, or ES is right here. So that's just something to keep in mind. If we're looking long, we're probably want to be looking at ES um, in the short term. So NAS did take this low, and so we'll see if we get a reaction out of that. But definitely could have played the breakout. I just didn't really feel like doing it on live because I would rather not teach that stuff. Um, it kind of comes with time to see, oh, we're going to break out here, a little SMT at the highs, um, failure to displace higher, we're probably going to shoot lower. But is there a way to judge how far? I don't try to predict anything, I just react to it. And so no reason to predict anything here. I would say this is a potential spot to bounce, but due to this aggressive movement, remember how I said um, we get this aggressive move off the open, we're going to get a BPR. Right. So here's our BPR. If we close into the low here. Then now we could be watching for some sort of retracement back up into that area. Down. Right. See, my my bias can change. Like I'm I'm not stagnant or like stuck in my bias. I just do what price action says. But you can see how much weaker NQ is, right? And yeah, I don't really look at the 15 minute time frame to kind of judge what I want to happen normally, right? If I have this marked out, then I'll go down to the one minute time frame. But I don't really base stuff off the one minute time frame. I like to use higher time frames. That makes sense. So we'll see if this closes in the highs or closes in the lows or not. Um, but you can see how we kind of, we, we thought we wanted a move down off the open, but then after looking at the one minute, I was like, okay, we're probably going to get a drop. How do you read volume on the one minute charge? Seeing you turn it on and off last stream. What are you looking for? You're looking long at 35 and that would be ideal. Yeah. Um, uh, but I like to use lower time frame entries and volume. I'll just go back to yes here. I like to see volume spikes at the low, right? So ideally, nothing too convincing here yet, depending on how this candle closes, that we might continue lower, right? 
Um, actually, I want to show you something. Depending, depending on this uh, displacement here. If we fail to displace higher, watch NQ though. NQ is so much weaker, but better risk to reward here. So if we fail to displace higher, we're most likely going to continue lower. And I don't know, I just don't trade Mondays most often. Or I would probably would have taken that trade there short. I'm not gonna chase it. So uh, I'm trying to explain it, so I missed my entry, but basically my entry there was just warning this deviation here due to no displacement higher. And if you look at NQ, right, NQ is still dropping on the one. So, and he's a lot weaker. I prefer ES just for the risk to reward. As we're right here, my stop can be there versus here. My stop has to be there, right? So, that's personal opinion. But no trades yet. Can't catch the difference between displacement. Well, displacement has to occur for a market structure break, right? All displacement is is big green candles or big red candles, right? See how this wasn't a big red candle? That's failure to this place higher, and we're still in a bearish trend unless we take these highs up here, right? So that's why I was saying we could look short right in there. Um, I just would have preferred us to kind of consolidate a second so I could have gotten a better entry. But now, right, ideally we want something like this, right? You just keep continuing until you get displacement, right? So um, there's no reason to be looking long yet. So here's the thing, everyone's different with time frames, right? Like I'm really good with lower time frames. I know people who can are really good with higher time frames. I just personally am not. So your daily daily bias, yeah, it was bullish, right? I that's why I said off the open. But the thing is, like, this is I might make a video on it. Is like daily bias doesn't matter if you don't have the structure that lines up with it. Does that make sense? Right, like. If I my daily bias is bullish and we're getting massive red candles like this, why why would I long? You know what I mean? Like, don't set in stone your bias, right? Like, look what price action is doing because my bias comes from structure, right? So why not use structure to confirm or deny my bias? Which, if you can look, I wanted a Judas swing off of open. I just didn't like. I'm still bullish, but I'm I'm not looking long yet, right? And so you can see. Uh, power three, yeah, essentially. So, I would like new lows here. Might not get them, but I would want them before um nine forty five. Bias is your worst enemy. It's yes and no to extent, right? Like, if I know where price is going, I don't really care to make perfect entries, right? Like, if I if I knew we were going lower, I would just be entering on these green candles. Just put my stop here. Like I, I know we're going lower, right? Or like, I have a strong conviction or reason to believe that. However, right now I'm like not super biased, right? So that's why I'm kind of sitting out and just watching. Um, obviously, you know we called that move off by like twenty five cents. I'm just not feeling like taking it because I'd rather you know kind of teach, explain, than make however much money that is on what is a lower probability trade for me. Um, what's at 9.45? Nothing, just, uh, that's when you get a 15-minute flip. Um, right, so, essentially here we get new 15-minute candles. That's all it is. If you look, we probably had a little SMT on the lows here. Um, it's easier to see if we go to a lower time frame. So you can see. Might sustain, might not. Yes. Didn't take the low. NQ did, which you'd expect because NQ is a lot weaker. We'll see if that sustains, though. Um, usually these one-minute ones get ran over quite a bit. 
Um, and I would prefer it to get ran over. You can kind of see, this is how I normally scalp is I have some sort of bias, just and by bias, I just mean we're trending down. So what do I look for? I look for some sort of PD array to get short, right? And essentially that's why I used this little order block and a fair value gap. That is my point of interest. And you can see we were off by 25 cents and you know, it would have provided, but just not something I'm really looking for. Yes. Just watching ICT only, I was so stuck on the point about daily buys. Yeah, I mean, so here's the thing about me is I personally, I might make a video like, does bias matter, right? Like, people define bias in a certain way, right? Which can be confusing. A lot of people will be like, I only want to trade longs. I only want to trade shorts. I'm more of a person like, oh, this is a short opportunity. I'll take that. Oh, this is a long opportunity. I'll take that. Where are we targeting on this long opportunity? The structure up here. My bias is to hit the target. Like I, I don't, I'm not too, too stuck in bias. Oh yeah, so um, this is on NASDAQ right now. I'll just actually uh, go over to NQ, pull it up. It's on the one minute. Uh, I'll add it in real quick. I have to adjust my settings. Maybe my settings are off a little. I'll have to ask TFO. But um, I just got sent on Discord. This is the BPR indicator, right? So had an aggressive move up, slight aggressive move down. There's your entry for the short there. It's pretty solid. Um, but I'm going to delete this so we. Don't get a cluttered screen. Let me remove this right now. Um, signs you should consider changing your bias. Just displacement, right? Displacement over structure. That's how you change trend. That's all it is. Bank holiday, why trade? I'm have you seen I haven't taken a trade yet. I'm more doing this as just like a learning exercise where we all kind of watch and learn, right? There's nothing wrong with doing that. Exactly. Your settings are off. You want to send me your settings in Discord? Also, I closed early. Yeah. So a lot of people, here's the thing, is like a lot of people will be like, oh, we're starting to move up. These are, these are aggressive candles. I want to be bullish. And it's like, you shouldn't be because where do you have to do you see any fair value gaps on these green candles? No, right? No aggressive move down. And if you look at these candles, aggressive, aggressive, we took the low, right? That's why there's no reason to be looking bullish yet, right? If that makes sense. Do you live stream opens often? Um, I've started a live stream on Monday mornings because I kind of enjoy it. It's fun to teach live. There's a lot of people that don't think that I can like annotate live and stuff like that. So it's cool. So right here, right, this might be a turning point for us. If we break this high right here, retrace, go, right. And we're coming right in on the new 15 minute candles could give us new continuity. So if we go to a lower time frame here, I'll show you, this will actually be a BPR. So you can see, Here's your little volume spike as well, right there. You have a little BPR here. All right, I prefer this high to be taken here, and then a retracement. Doesn't mean we have to get a retracement, but we could. Um, I just, if this was at a point of interest, then I would consider looking long right in here. Um, like even without the break of structure, which let's see real quick what it would be. I might just do it for fun. Might retest previous lows. I'm gonna hold off for it now. I can get a second entry later, but ideally I'd want to see a move down into this area and then make new highs. Um, 
Are you a student of the private section of ICT? No, I learned everything off of YouTube. Just off his 2022 mentorship. Um, yeah, definitely. So, not really the reaction we want to see out of this area quite yet. We'll see. Good morning. Anyway, you take a look at US 30. I've been watching your vids for a while. You've been helpful. Yeah, I can take a quick look at it. Um, in phase two of my challenge, and for some reason, I've just been crashing and burning. Um, if you're crashing and burning, it's most likely your risk management has been changed up or something like that. But <laughs> what's up, Mamba? Would you kiss Brian Stonk? Maybe after he buys me the Mercedes he owes me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I used to trade Solvia off volume profile. Yeah, so if you watch, like, let me see. If, uh, if you watch, I, I watch uh, the, if I'm watching volume profile, I'll look for um, ledges and uh, low volume notes. Essentially, like, this would be a low volume node right here, right? She gave this entry, but not really interested in a whole lot right now. I'll probably just say, uh, let chat kind of flip the coin and we'll just use some risk management, see how it works out. Are right, you seeing the SMT divergence on the daily? Yeah, so. But I'm not super, I don't know. I'm just, the way I trade is such low time frames where it's like looking at the way with daily and weekly can give me a higher time frame point of interest, but I would prefer to just use like the hour 15, four hour as my daily chart to per se. Are you looking long? Why well, I took, yeah, I took previous day low. Previous day low, this place went up. Not super aggressive, right? But that's what I'd like to see. So you can see that BPR did work out, right? Even without the um, breaking structure. So that worked. We, I might look for a secondary entry here if we do displace over this high. If we fail to displace, then I'll have to look for a sale, a sell. But it looks like we are displacing, right? For the time being. Um, do I trade full time? I'm actually a college student, so no, I do school as well, but this is what I do, yeah. If you took your, this trade where your targets be, my first target would be right here, this target here. And then, you know, I would want to see overnight highs, ideally, if I was in that trade. But the fact that we couldn't really, we get an aggressive move up, an aggressive move back down. This isn't price action that I really want to be trading, right? You're more than likely to get chopped up in this. Who makes the BPR indicator? Um, TFO. So if you guys want to check him out, he has a link to it. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's this right here. I'll actually just uh, copy it real quick for everyone. And, uh, drop it in the stream. So there you go. Yeah, it's just my, my friend TFO. Check latest ICT vid. I, not gonna lie, I haven't watched an ICT vid since like, I finished the 2022 mentorship, to be honest. The thing is, it's like, you don't need a billion concepts to be profitable. You just need to focus on certain ones that will make you profitable. What's BPR? Balanced price range. First time I watch you here, and it's far from IC2 trading. You must have modded. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you mean by it's far from IC2 trading. I mean, they're all IC2 concepts, just on lower time frames. This is just... I believe that it doesn't matter anymore. But, I mean, I, I don't really care. Risk management has been 1% typically, so consider and fit. So, yeah, ideally it's probably, you just need to understand your emotions. You don't need to not have emotions, but you just need to understand the emotions you're feeling and how you're likely to react to it, right? Um, right here, took this low here, 
if this is our deviation, we should see higher prices here. But we do need displacement over the side fairly quickly. Let me read it. No, it's not far from on, it's quite spot on. I mean, so there you go. So when I'm scalping, right, like these are little like two turtle soup entries I'll take um, if I'm expecting it to go higher. So if you look 15, um, I don't always execute on the 15 second, right? It's just when prices are choppy. The reason for this, I'll just kind of show you what, because a lot of times I forget to really explain when I'm like live trading. Let's turn off volume here. So if you look, we're just gonna clear this out. Aggressive move down, running lows, right? Aggressive move back up, BPR entry, right? Takes highs, not very aggressive over highs, right? We do have equal highs now, which is ideally a target. But what do we get here? This is your typical third value gap entry, right? With the BPR. What is this right here? That's your kind of inducement, right? So this is your internal range liquidity that gets ran, right? And then move higher. So, and now you can see, ran that lower. This is aggressive. Where would you want to see? You want to see price return back up into here? Well, it's kind of already did it, but ideally retest those lows before going lower. But that's essentially why I was looking at that. I just don't draw it out very much anymore. Um, do you use limit market or stop orders to get in? I don't use stop orders um, normally. I normally use market orders, or I mean, my bad. I normally use limit orders, but I will occasionally use a market order if I just want to hop in and I don't. The only thing about market order is like, you can get bad fills depending on timing, right? If I wanted to get short, I would have marketed in on this candle, right? But this is also like a breakout trade literally at the lows. <laughs> so, but I wouldn't want to short like, you know, on one of these candles because then you get put in all the way here. If you get a retracement, you're just kind of screwed. Um, Discord. I mean, here I can look and drop the link real quick. Give me one second. I gotta check out some back 17 at one dollar something um i don't know how to dm you what's up oh how's it going you see you elaborate why possible first market structure shift on the 15 second did not work do you mean this one right here because we never broke structure on a higher time frame right never even closed above that on a one minute even and then five minute, we're not even close because five minute, we have to be, we put in, that is our lower high, right? So that's why I was saying, you can scalp stuff, right? But still bearish on higher time frames. Well, bearish on these time frames. What's the name of your Discord? I'm doing good, man. Oh, Aaron. I love Aaron, bro. What do you think of, oh, I was going to look at US 30 for someone. Um, the US 30 is pretty similar. Uh, the chop, right? We're getting an aggressive move lower. We're going to come up and retest. Could come up, retest previous lows. We'll see. What I will maybe do is I might live trade on a Wednesday or something when I'm normally taking a lot more trades. Um, like last week, I only really traded Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I didn't take a single trade on Friday. Um, it's just kind of what I have found to be best for me. Not nice. There's my account number and everything. But so and I have I just bought another funded account today because I ran two of them up pass over their withdrawal points, so I'm just gonna leave those ones chill, withdraw the money, then keep trading them. But once you get past the withdrawal point, the risk to reward is 
not super great to keep trading them. So, uh, -uh. ticket trade, do it. All right, gold analysis. Let's see. I mean, it's obviously bearish on the higher time frames, right? If you're looking, we're just trending down. If you do want to look to get long, you just got to wait for previous lows to be ran, aggressive move higher, then you can look to get entries into there, right? Um, but ideally, you want to see these premium discount arrays respected, so to continue short. Um, but here, let's see. Please don't do requests. I'm not sure what you Long and close eyes, bozo. <laughs> Why does RRR get off? So here's the thing about funded accounts, right? Um, second, we're gonna switch to MES here. Um, I'm gonna just go to this blank screen here. So you have a certain limit where you can make money on a funded, right? So for example, let's say, I think for me, it's like 1250 on both accounts or something. So this is 1250 dollars, right? I'm above that mark on both my accounts. So at the end of the month, right, I can just withdraw that money. However, if I keep trading it, right, even if I run it up, this is the max I can withdraw. There's no more that I can withdraw out of that account at the end of the month. However, if I lose the account or drop down and can't withdraw, I lose being able to withdraw that. So essentially the risk reward is you can't gain any more for your withdrawal in this month, but you can lose the withdrawal. So that's why I, um, you know, I have two that I'm waiting on the withdrawal and I just got another one to just kind of trade. So if that makes sense to you, please reply to me. You, I am trading ICT methods. Oh Lord, you just looked at the higher time frame. But he says it. What do you mean, Gordy? Like I'm, I'm a little confused on what you're saying. Price is fractal, so my higher time frame might not be your higher time frame. I don't really know what your. So the system is yeah, yeah, kind of. But I mean, I still. Why does that matter? Gordy, if you want to explain what you mean, I can have a conversation about it. Um, I had an Apex account and then I have an ETF account too. So Elite Trader Funding. And I just bought another Elite Trader Funding. Yeah, exactly. I haven't taken any trades. I definitely could have, but. Yeah, I know it doesn't, my liquidation level doesn't move. Like I'm well over my liquidation level. But the thing is, it's like, I'm already up enough to where I can withdraw and still have a good um drawdown like i'm not really worried about losing the account after it so like i just traded asia last night and just called it good so what do you see right here failure to displace higher right so mo most likely going to target this low Go real quick. Will you please explain your strategy? I've done it quite a bit. Is uh just some sort of higher time frame point of interest and then lower time frame setup. That's, that's all it is. So now we just took that low we were talking about, right? Now we'll see if we displace under it. I'll I'll occasionally use the marketing <clears throat> market opening prices depending on the structure that is there. 
um, if you noticed. If you follow my Twitter, I'll use the 830 sometimes if there is no whole lot. Yeah, I'll make a higher time frame video. Oh. Basically, you don't use any indicators, just price action. How long did it take you to back to ICT? Um, essentially, I started in April, um, about two weeks to get through all the videos, and then um, about a month and a half of just watching price, no trading, nothing. Um, and that's where most of my learning came from. Are you able to trade ASIC chestnuts? Yeah. You just can't, uh, uh, you just can't hold through the, uh, like New York afternoon close into the open. No, uh, do you trade BPR gaps over a normal fair value gap? Yeah. So you have to have a normal fair value gap in order for their to be a BPR. That makes sense. So like right here, I'll expand this screen. You have to have this fair value up here to have a BPR because they overlap, right? All it does is kind of narrow down your entry point. That makes sense. No, um, it depends on the account you're using for max withdrawals. But I think it's like 1.2 or 1.5k for the first month. So I'm just going to do that out of both my accounts and then run them up again. And then likely by that time, I'll have this one funded as well that I just started today. BPR and fair value. So BPR is you need multiple fair value gaps. Right. Um, real quick, we're going to look, see where we're at. So we did just run this low, right? So let's see, just ran this low into this fair value gap. So this is a point of interest if we get a lower time frame set up long, right? What ICT content did you study? I just studied the 2022 mentorship and then I also watched the uh, Market Maker series. It's like five videos. I think they would move below 8.30 or midnight open. I mean, it's definitely possible. And considering we are under midnight open, we already ran under it. Nice, me too. Yeah. How do you choose between external and internal? I normally use lower time frame setups to confirm, right? There's no reason for me to get long here. We barely have any displacement up, right? And it's immediately retracted. Really what happened was took this previous high into this fair value gap, made our intermediate term high, moved lower. This is possibly a failed swing. ES is definitely still stronger, but I would need a break over this high to be looking long. And that's on 15 second chart, right? Um, we'll go up to a one minute so it's easier for most, but. Um, can you make the videos regarding entries? I tried your A plus entry setup and but yeah. direction was not much of a problem. Yeah, so I actually, the video for this week, I'm still thinking about how to film it, but it's going to be over um, entries. Yeah, it bounced off New York open. We'll see what happens. And there's no reason to rush into trades personally. What paranoia, what? I've been trading for about a year and three quarters. So over half, what, a year and a half now? Um, but I, I studied pretty hard, but it was just a pretty basic price action. I didn't do any like TA stuff. It was like the strat and stuff like that. Any bias? I mean, it's bearish right now. Why is ICT creating drama? Dude, I, I don't know. I don't really like pay attention to any of the drama. If you uh, look at my Twitter page, it's basically the absence of drama. 
And if anyone starts drama, it just posts like a monkey gif or something funny. Because I don't know why everyone tries to tear everyone down when it's like it, it helps you in the long run to be helpful to other people. What ICT concept made me most profitable? Um, really just watching large displacement ranges with a fair value up. So, for example, we go down to the open, right? Just watching stuff like this, where, oh, here's our displacement range down. Do we reach up into a discount? Oh, right there, there's your core entry, right? Essentially, what made me the most probable is just paying attention to big red candles, big green candles, and then a retracement into an area where you're going to get solid risk to reward. That's all that really killed it for me. So we are getting some displacement up here. Need it to sustain. And then we'll look for something. Um, if you trade from a fair value up, but sell side, it's not in. I was not profitable with the strat. I The only concept I use from the strat still is broadening formations, which is essentially like this would be your broadening formation. It's like that, right? And all it is is the reason I still use it is it lines up with ICT. And let me explain is we just ran this previous low, right? If we get an aggressive move up, we're going to look to the other side of the range, which is basically what a broad information is. So we are going to look long here. We wanted to see a retracement into there. I would prefer, you know, something a little better. But considering this is more of a liquidity grab, couldn't even break on a higher time frame. Not really interesting right now. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. I I haven't watched any of the twenty sixteen content, not gonna lie. I don't need to. How much time did you give yourself studying when you were learning the twenty twenty two mentorship weekly and on the weekends? Um I essentially just watched all the videos at the gym. I know that's kinda weird, but um like when I was doing cardio, I would just watch a video, do my cardio for the entire video at one and a half speed, and then that was did that each day for like a week plus some other times. And then I spent like a month and a half. And yeah, uh, your premium discount for entry, should we look at? So it depends on the time frame you're looking to trade, right? You want to have some higher time frame narrative. So like even just looking at the 15 second chart, you can see the higher time frames are bearish. So even if you're looking at the 15 second, this, you know, you could have taken a long entry in here, but do that we uh, ran this high, right? Aggressively up and then just met really aggressively back down. Not super interested in trying to long that. Why do you prefer futures over Forexes? I've, I've never traded Forexes, Forex indices, um, and they kind of have a spread. A lot of times when I'm trading, I'm trading really low time frames, which would kind of wreck me. Um, are you going to do some kind of mentorship at some point? I don't know about that. Um, I really do enjoy YouTube and just helping people out that way. It's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really watch any YouTubers besides like Alex Options um, prior to ICT's mentorship. So I'm going to go back and we'll sit on the one minute here. That will be safer per se, but trading ES, uh, I trade NQ as well. Last night, um, I traded in Asia session on um, NQ on one account and then ES on the other. I do not trade Bitcoin. Why don't you trade US30? Um, I don't know, I find I have enough to look with look at with NASDAQ and ES, so I kind of just um, call that good. But Looks like we're reaching down into filling this fair value gap on the 15 minute for ES. And so 
um, ideally we get a strong reaction, break some highs, and we can look for long entries. But the market, any market, is very difficult to trade because I just gap and big gap zone opening in it. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to help you out with that one. I am still in stat trading. So here, up the link if you guys want to check it out. So your bearish on NQ, but first I think we'll fill in the big one hour fair value gap. I'm looking for a setup in lower time frames in that fair value gap. Yeah, that's that's essentially what I do. Is 2016 content not necessary? You don't need very many concepts to make a system, right? So I would say it's not necessary for me, but that's for me, right? Everyone is different in this game. 39.64 interest there. That's fair. I mean, if we go to a, go to like an hour, I mean, 15. that so this is where i want to be searching for longs possibly because we just filled this imbalance right but i want to see that on the lower time frames um looks like i possibly could have caught that s p 15 second i'm gonna switch these to mes and mmq I just don't put on much risk during Mondays. I'll do like four on tracks normally. Oh. Four. I've lost five points. So, could possibly get something here. You expect a retracement? I'd like to be getting long here soonish. Um, need some more breaks of structure, right? We're on the 15 seconds, so this isn't doing very much. Um, ideally, we get some sort of shift on the one. Um, I just like the 15 because we're at a point of interest, so. This is where you can get some lower risk reward setups or lower risk high reward setups. Uh, yeah, so when I do my lives in stat, it's just on a private YouTube channel. Um, it depends, uh, Jer Jaren Pun. I like to have a higher time frame routine. I found it's more um, reliable. What's your average RR? I try to shoot for over two. What futures market equivalent to the micro S&P do you recommend? I, I don't know any. I just trade a micro S&P and micro NASDAQ. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I, I try to have a good time on Twitter. There's so many people that just try to show hate and stuff like that. Um, currently, my win rate is, last week is 65% was my win rate. And my RR is normally around two. At least that's what I try to go for. Obviously, sometimes I exit early, you know, still battling the mind, you know what I mean? But uh, how do you do divergences between the two? Kind of went over that, but we'll see if we have one down here. And if we do, I'll show you. Short at five minute fair value gap. I don't know where you're trying to short up there. Or, I mean, that's why I'm looking long. Or would be looking long. Average monthly yield. Hmm. I mean, 
I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I go crazy. But the way I treat funded accounts is I will, uh, I'll treat my drawdown as my account size. So like if I have a 1500 drawdown, that's my account size. And like I did a hundred percent of my drawdown last week on both accounts, but, um, NASDAQ low a day. How do you get your, I went along so bad. I mean, it looks like we're getting close to being able to long here. So. <laughs> Why are you live on a bank holiday? Uh, I mean, I'm doing this more for fun and to kind of answer people's questions. Just watch price action, right? Like, obviously it's going to be a lower probability, but it doesn't mean we can't, you know, learn or do some fun stuff. On average, how many successful trade setups do you get in a week? And um, it depends what type of trading I'm doing. If I'm sitting for really high probability setups, not as many. But um, like last week, I was scalping quite a bit. And I took a lot of trades. I'll just say a lot. Um, yeah, of course, uh, Derek. Thanks for watching. What do you mean you go crazy? Um, <laughs> Like we'll say on one account last week, I think I did 180 trades, but I was also testing stuff. So um, <laughs> he's a big dog and can go live whenever he wants. That's funny. Um, what if there's a bigger structure without taking liquidity? I kind of already answered this is yeah, you can take stuff like that, right? But I prefer to have some sort of um, higher time frame setup or reasoning to be looking long, right? It just uh, it's higher probability. So we're actually going to probably start looking for longs here. Break a structure on the M1. Kind of, yeah, I'd, I'd consider it. I just want to see more aggressive up. Um, I'll probably be looking in Q or M and Q for longs here. We could have taken that setup, right? But I'd prefer to wait for some more confirmation. <clears throat> Damn. Do you expect prices to go higher? Um, I don't know if we'd go all the way up to high a day. I can't like predict that stuff. Like I can have opinions, but I don't really know what's going to happen. Right? I would prefer to at least get a retracement over these highs. <laughs> I can tell you that. So let's see what happens. Ideally, get something like this. And then risk about that. I'll do that. Three point stop targeting eight. Three point stop 15, eight times four, 32. Move in right now is slow. Yeah, definitely. So the only thing I worry about with this is like, you look at a one minute, not really displacing up, right? So this is your, they call it your low risk buy, but this is your higher risk buy. So I will probably take what, two contracts, risk almost 40 bucks, make. 80 ish. We'll just go in for it. Like we missed it by a couple points there. Or not a couple points, a couple ticks. That's all right though. No, I don't really want to do it because if we get an aggressive move right back through. I think the day is going to go take out the highs, Dixie. I don't know. I don't really watch Dixie much. I'll go look at it. One minute. I don't know. It's just consolidating the highs. Kind of looks like a breakout trade. 
Oh, I think we might have. Nope. Yeah, so probably go run these highs here soon. It, I'm just not confident in anything. So like normally on today's like today, I would either scalp really quick. Uh, this is trade of eight through ETF, elite trader funding. Her scalping is definitely not as good as like a ninja trader. Um, I really enjoy scalping on ninja trader. What's up, legendary? Yeah, I mean, I haven't really, I haven't traded yet, so technically not trading live yet. We're just kind of analyzing live. <laughs> but this is kind of crappy price action, right? You might say, oh, it's like really good displacement on the 15 second there. Possibly if we got down into there, I'd have risked a setup. But like looking at the one minute, there's not very much displacement up, right? So this would lead me to think more short still. But let's go look at MMQ or NQ. So NQ did take that. So we'll see. I might just risk something for fun. Here, we'll do this. Uh, we'll go to a 15 second chart. All right, you guys tell me where to long or short, I'll pick a single contract and stop those and we'll just go for it. Yeah, micro, it's $55 a handle. You guys tell me where you want me to long or short and I'll just do it. Just for fun. It's not too hard to make back if I lose, so. I wouldn't use TV or Selvian super. Yeah, no, definitely. I I completely agree. It's just uh, for these accounts, like I'll sometimes live trade them, and it's a lot easier to show my analysis and then just execute on here versus like, oh, I'm gonna trade Ninja. Sorry, I just scalped that on my side screen. All right, cool. We got some guy spamming. Sick. Remove these. Add user. There we go. All right, sorry about that. 39 long, short at 45. All right, we'll 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 do that. Now wait eight more minutes, 30 minute close, but we get some juice. <laughs> you guys got to collectively agree on something. Do we have displacement on NAS? I wouldn't say this is displacement on a higher time frame sprint. Technically, like I would have, that's why I was looking, I would have taken like a, a small long right in here. Um, but just with the way this price action is, like this is not fun, right? This is this is like basically gambling and essentially why I'm saying like, hey, you guys want to choose something for me. So we do have this little NAS divergence here. You guys want me to short NAS for fun of it or what? Watch the first six videos I take. Yeah, it definitely changes your perspective on things. You guys tell me what to do. We'll do just have some fun here. But I'm mad new to this. Hey man, it doesn't it doesn't matter how new or how old you are in this game, it just matters that you uh, put in some work. Right? There's gonna be times where you wanna give up, trust me. I had one where I took a month and a half off and I was like, dude, am I cut out for this? Like, can I do this? And it's just, you have to, you got to do it. Um, it's, yeah, I use fixed stops. How many percent per trade do you usually open the trades for? I'm not sure exactly what you mean, evil. Long NAS on the fair value up. Which fair value up? The one minute? Or... Talk in here. Or MES 46 to the stop at there. All right, if we get up to there, I'll, I'll do it. Please go live on Wednesday. I'm off work. Yeah, I'll consider it. Um, it kind of depends on what my classes are doing this week. But um, almost have to force your no 100%. The thing is, it's like it's a mental battle against yourself, right? 
here. We'll see what happens here. Only look for shorts, boys. <laughs> should I should I fade uh should I fade Chris right now and go long for the fun? For the fun of it. Right now we're just kind of messing around because I don't feel like trading this sniper entry. Good stuff, man. My opinion is short. All right, let's see. What do you guys think? I just joined. Can you show a setup that you look for in the 15 second? Sure. So I want price to move below here, ideally. I mean, I can scalp if you guys want. Try to ride it up and then back down. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Sorry guys, what's a handle? A handle is just a point, it's the same thing. So 39 to 40 on a yes, that'd be one handle. Short right now. All right, don't get me wrong here. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, single micro. I'll stop out if we break above this high. Aggressive scalp. I'm just taking stuff based on chat. <laughs> like I... Just trying to have some fun before we hop off. Partial could be equal highs, so... I'll stop out of that thing. That was fun. Who owes me money? Who said short? <laughs> I'm just messing. Alright, so that is displacement up. Right? Lost thirty dollars on that trade. Oh no! Never make it back. So that is our displacement, right? You can definitely see that. Oh, I I'm out. No, no, this is on a this is a funded account. <laughs> I'm. I, this isn't paper trading. This is like an actual account. I just started it, but I did say that. <laughs> <laughs> Refund, please. No, so the thing is, it's like everyone has different ideas. Right? I'm going to go down to 15 seconds here, see how this price sustains. All right, guys, what do you say? Do I build the long position here? Take shorts now? Okay, uh, dude, stop spamming chat. All right. I'm just spamming, so. That was something to do with news. Bro, I checked news. There wasn't really much going on. Do you measure your displacements? I don't measure my displacements. I mean, this is the most I'll measure displacements, right? By just using a fib. Long? I was looking for long after we took the lows. Yeah, that's smart. Liquidity grab on buy side. I think short is good. I, I don't know, dude. We're, we're, we're holding these highs They're currently. I would say this is a long continuation. We'll, we'll do it. If we buy market, just mess around. Long one minute fair value gap. All right. I'll wait for it. We'll long the one minute fair value gap. All right. Trusting you on this one, man. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I am long. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We're printing. My stops is slow. 
Let's keep this live trading routine going. Sure. Bearish BTR on 13. Possibly. Yeah. I see that. You guys are leading me astray today. No, I'm just messing. It's a bank holiday. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're watching, we're, we're gambling. We're gambling on my funded account. This is just an eval. This isn't my, my other funded. But this one's going to work. I don't normally use market order. I just, I, I don't really care right now. So I'm just trying to run stuff. We're going to look for, where should we look? Should we look for uh, this area up here? Should we look for overnight highs? Find out. It looks bad to VH. Yeah, it doesn't look too great, but it is what it is. There we go. Uh, YouTube stream might be a little delayed. Let me move it forward. What funded? I'm using a uh, elite trader funding. So little thing that worries me here is NAS is not even reaching for that high. So may close this, but I don't want to do it prematurely. I'll probably just add a stop in um, break even. That'll stop. And we'll just put it like right here. That way if we get ran over, it's whatever. As bear fell to bear value gap. Yeah. I'm actually going to put it right here so I can see what we're at. Read it like a moon bag and let it run all day. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. We'll, we'll let it run. It's going to stop us out right here. There we go. Got stopped out. Tough. Tough luck. All right. What's the next play, boys? Your limit was at 43. Do we relong it? How long have you been trading? I've been trading IC concept, ICT concepts like since the spring. Do we chase this? <laughs> Just do everything wrong. No. I'm just messing around. Five minutes looks like we filled fair bike. <laughs> I just got DM fade whatever people are telling me to do. Shorts for sure. Alright, I'm a long right now. <laughs> Another long. <laughs> That's some aggressive displacement down. <laughs> right here, I'll say Alex options. Long or short short dream. I asked Alex what to do. Long or short. We'll see what he says. Uh, what is FU? It's the same thing as inducement, right? So if we go to our 15 second chart here, we just dropped under this low. That's our FU entry. Basically, screw all of you that went long right here. I'll stop you out and then actually go um, if it does go. Flip a coin. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to flip a coin, do four point stop, eight point reward. Flip a coin. All right. Wait, heads, heads long, tails short. Tails, tails long. All right, Alex said short real quick, so we're gonna we're gonna attempt it. We'll go ahead and uh, start it here for some fun. <laughs> Full port. 
Oh my gosh, that's too good. You have to call it. After this one, if we get stopped out, this has a massive stop. Loki. This is 100% gambling, guys. I do not recommend. <laughs> this is not how I trade. But, um... Thirty-six twelve, most likely. No, this isn't. This is a funded account or like a funded eval. So, like, if I lose this account, I lose money technically. But you can you can ask other people. I I do this. Not even on stream. Like, I'll just do this for fun with friends sometimes. All right, let's see. Right, what is F you? Dude, I, I, it's, I'm gambling. <laughs> yeah, more fun losing someone. This is anxiety inducing? Why? It, it's not too bad. How about this? After this trade. We'll, we'll take a, a, a an NQ mini, and you can <laughs> you can see how anxiety inducing it is. But do I add one? Unsubscribing? Well, sorry, man. Sorry, you're unsubscribing. The thing is, it's like I wouldn't recommend trading this day, anyways. because banks are on holiday. It's very low probability. Damn, that's tough. Lost a subscriber. All right. I actually love all my subscribers. I try to respond to every single one. Oh yeah, there we go. Where are we heading next? Go to the, the 15 minute here. So I'll put in a, a limit fill right here. <laughs> All I'm saying is I told you short. You're promoting gambling? I'm I, I said not to do this. I'm not promoting it at all. Um, I don't know, I'll take trades, not during high impact news and stuff, but, um, uh, NQ is a lot weaker here. Well then here, I'll exit this trade and I'll scalp for you guys. I just like to have fun sometimes. Tell them clean the areas. <laughs> yeah, don't follow my trades. This is, this is not the point of live trading. It's to teach. Yeah. <laughs> you sent Alex money now. So here, here's the thing, guys, is I've actually went through this a little bit. And I'll explain why I do stuff like this. Because it has it has taught me. You should be teaching discipline. I did you I didn't take a single trade all morning because it didn't meet my setup. But um the reason I do this is I used to have a fear of losing money, right? It's kind of it's like called I've done some research on it. It's called exposure therapy. Basically, you put yourself purposely in these situations to expose yourself to it. So then when you actually do, it doesn't matter, right? So I took those stopouts for no reason. 
just to lose money, just to see, oh, it's okay to lose money, right? Like I, I don't really care, but. So when we sweep these lows, right? What will I be looking for? A lower time frame setup to get long. I didn't realize so many people hated the, the flip a coin, but. <laughs> Thanks, John. Appreciate it. <clears throat> but we'll see here what happens. <laughs> yeah, seriously. My normal size is uh, like 10 cons normally, so. Dude, I, I'm not teaching. I explained my reasoning for why I do this. I don't like it. here. The reason for doing this is I used to have the fear of losing money. So I exposed myself purposely to losing money in order to realize it's okay. You're quite entertained. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was kind of fun too. I might close out here. Yeah, look up, look up exposure therapies. Like it's a, it's an actual thing. I'm gonna exit that just cause. Is this demo? This is my. This is a funded eval. Fear of losing is cause your plan failed. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know this was <laughs> so dramatic. We all know you just love. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, look up, look up exposure therapy. Thanks, Jenna. I'm glad you made videos or made a thousand bucks. Yeah, I don't know. You guys, I don't know. This is this is how I am. If you don't like it, you don't you don't have to subscribe to me. You don't have to do that. I just I've literally like I've talked to basically a psychologist about it. Right? I shouldn't exit that earlier, but I'm glad that you, uh, yeah, I don't know why people are so serious. I mean, with those mess around trades, I'm still up on the day. So, I mean, yeah, I took a single micro. But no, here, here's, here's my background. So you guys can, uh, can listen. I I used to have a fear of trading, like just taking a trade. There was times where I couldn't even take a single trade. Like I couldn't even enter a micro. Like there was times like that, right? And the way I got over that was not looking at w what the trade is and just entering and taking a loss and realizing that's okay. It's okay to take losses, right? Because I used to think you had to be perfect and you know, only take winners. Now I realize, like you saw that I just took two losses and then still went on profit with just single micros, right? Like it's okay to take losses, right? I was just doing this to have some fun because I wasn't planning on trading today. Anyways, if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're, if you're not really up for it, you know what I mean? Like if you, I, I don't care. You can, you can say comments and stuff like that. <clears throat> But essentially, what you could learn from this is, oh, I took a stop out right here, right? Good risk management. Took a stop out here. Good risk management, right? Oh, I entered here. It started winning. Yes, I exited slightly pre prematurely, but I still made all those losses back and a little bit more, 
right? Uh, <laughs> that's how I used to date. <laughs> oh my gosh. What funded account are you using? Um, this is Elite Trader Funding. I actually partnered with them, but uh, I'm not sure what other ones have have uh, in TV integration, but um, Elite, you can do... Um, here, real quick, we're going to go to 15 seconds, see if there's something fun. Um, Elite, you can do Ninja, Trade of 8, or um, Trading View, and I do Trading View because it allows me to do Trade of 8 as well, so I can use the mobile app, which is good for school. Yo, is the t <laughs> people are salty because they wanted free signals. I mean, if you if you look in uh, in my Discord, I'm pretty serious most of the time. You can ask anyone in there. I think there's a few people in the uh, uh, in the chat here that are in there. They can say it. If your eyes can't see others, like sometimes maybe you should consider retreat. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Trade, yeah, there's there's a few. Um, so this looks like it's gonna go right, take new lows. Not really much displacement. How would you trade a 100K fast track in terms of risk management? Okay, so obviously not like this, just to clear things up for everyone. But 100k fast track, you have 3,000 drawdown, right? So, uh, <laughs> thanks, Adam. That's so funny. Uh, but 300k drawdown, right? If you go to my, I have my little, uh, uh, my little, I made a little video on position sizing. It has the little Excel sheet on it. You can check that out. But essentially, I would, it's a fast track, right? So you have 14 days to complete it. So you have to size a little bit. I personally use like 7% of my drawdown, which is um, if we take 7% of your drawdown, which is 3,000, right? 3,000 times 0 0.07, right? 200 bucks, so risk $200 per trade. Um, and then your profit target is 6K. So that's how I would do it, and that would make sure you have 15 trades to you know, lose the account, essentially. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of fun. But, um, let's see. You know, Alex, I'll edit that video today. Do you have a journal? Um, I don't personally journal right now. Um, I'll go back through and review price action, but... Um, yeah, of course. Thanks to, uh, everyone that enjoyed the, the live, I guess <laughs> I'll, uh, do that on the side, not flip a coin. Any golden words? Just don't give up. I mean, this is what my biggest thing was. I don't compare yourself to others. My problem was I compared myself to others that were highly successful. And then right away when I wasn't highly successful, I got down on myself, right? And so that kind of ruined it for me. And then I would say, don't be afraid to take losses, but just cut them. Like when you're invalidated, you're invalidated, right? Do you backtest? Yeah. Um, and so a few ways to backtest. If look up a soft Forex, um, I know I'm, I've been kind of busy, but I am going to try to make a video on this, but, um, Trading view replay is decent, except a lot of times I'm trading the lower time frames and their data doesn't go back far enough. Um, what is the, let's see. Yeah, I definitely lost, <laughs> lost some subscribers in this stream. I actually think I can look and see, let's see. Oh, it will, it'll show me eventually, <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, that's how I am. The guilt and anxiety is real. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for like losing subscribers because like I care about all the subscribers, but I mean, you gotta have fun in life sometimes, right? You gotta take some chances. Uh, benefits of BPR. See you, Jenna. Have a good one.
glad you made some money today. That's cool. Um, benefits of BPR. When you have aggressive price move it, movement up and then aggressive price action down, right? So if we go to something like a one, two. Yeah, so essentially like this, right? Aggressive move up here, aggressive move back down. Basically, it just shows that you ran stops and then you get aggressive move back. So it just kind of shows the direction you should be trading. Um, so you can't backtest multiple time frames or like multiple panes, like uh, windows in TradingView. On Soft Forex, you can. Soft for FX. Like the market, you lose some, you win some. Yeah, no, I just had fun. Uh, trading in general. Oh no, what happened, Howie? Can you explain how you determine daily bias? What happened with the, um, let me answer that first question. So basically, I like to use the lower time frames, right? So essentially, uh, the div divergence here is scaring me. That's why I kind of exited right there. But previous highs and lows equal highs and lows. Um, but the main thing to focus on for me is displacement, right? When you get an aggressive move down, it's likely to continue until you get an aggressive move back up, right? Um, yeah, I guess people can't take a job. Psychology and a slump scene. Oh, there's like, hey, Howie, uh, reach out to me on Discord or Twitter and we can talk about it, man. Try to get you back back on the right path. Um, what happened with those who went up? Essentially, I just said, hey, chat, do you want a long or short? <laughs> and we took two losses and then a win and um, still made money on the day. Like I'm up $15 <laughs> and they just, they didn't like that. So they unsubbed. But I, I said prior to, like, I analyzed this whole thing, you know, said that we could have taken shorts in there. Just, I don't like to trade on this day. And then I was just a kind of meme. But, um, are you Aaron? I am not Aaron. I'm T Mac in the Discord, but. When you start, when you were talking about your mental state, when starting out the mental and emotional side, yeah, one hundred percent. A lot of it is like you kind of just need to reset. Like, if you're in a bad mental state and you just keep pushing it every day, you're not going to really get better. Um, so for me, that was taking a slight break from the market, and nowadays I I rarely look at the market past. Like, I don't look at the afternoon session because I'll get burnt out, right? So. Um, yeah, well, the thing is, if they followed the calls that I, like, I said I was gambling, and this is not, like, a advice in any ways, this is just, like, me trading, right, but this is just all messing around, this would still, like, it's still profitable, because two stopouts, I had greater risk to reward, right? <laughs> they followed the first and second and unsubbed on the third, that's tough. Um, yeah, so we'll see if we get, an, ideally we get an aggressive move down, right? Met with an aggressive move back up. So that is ideally what we would be looking for here. And I will mark out this low over here. Right. So we'll see what happens here. I would actually sub. Yeah, people were... Can everyone hear me? Huh. I can hear myself on hand. But essentially, like, I don't know, they said it was undisciplined. They probably missed the whole first part of the stream where I'd never took a single trade. And then I was just kind of messing around. Thanks for the follow on Twitter. Couldn't get another entry. Yeah. I mean, let's see if there even was one. Not really. Right. Ideally, you would have preferred to see this movement be aggressive, right? Have some fair value gaps in here, and then you could take these entries for it again, but nothing too, too fun. Trust any trader that's willing to make his money live. I mean, it is my fun. It is a funded account, but to say I don't care about it would be false. <laughs> I do care about it. What's the next level you're looking at? 18s. And that's just uh, overnight lows, right? So. 
And it looks like we're gonna gonna take those if our daily my man's um if our daily bias is bearish, we are so so I personally don't focus on bias too much, to be honest. I just focus on what the structure is telling me. That's what's been doing better for me. Have a good one, Rex. Thanks for coming in. Let's go overnight low. Yeah. So ideally, we'd want to see this hold. Go reach down lower to here. Rodney information, yeah. The thing is about that is I'm not caring for it too much. We're coming into London close kind of soonish. Excel and Nas at midnight open, good stuff. Would you consider long if the 18s get broken? Yes, but I want to see a lower time frame setup to confirm it, right? I don't want to just long because of it. If that makes sense. It looks like that was wrong there. Should have saw a little fair value up there, but that's all right. Yeah, I mean, so the thing is, I used to have like strong bias, like, oh, it should do this today, stuff like that. But if structure doesn't confirm or deny that, like, what does it really mean? You know, eight hour fair value gap. See, I, this is what I would want to see. I'd want to see some sort of aggressive move lower, aggressive move back up, retest there. Go. Like, that would be my ideal long entry. I want to see something real quick. <laughs> yeah. I think I did lose some subscribers on that, but that's that's all right. Can't please everyone. Learned that early in life, and it's a lot better. Do more. Nah, <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Um, I'm sitting, sitting here looking at the 15 second. So the the one thing about sitting on the 15 second like this, right, <clears throat> is you have to be aware of what your higher time frames are doing, right? Because your 15 minute or your 15 second is always going to give an entry prior to your five to the 15 hour, right? But there is risk involved there. What do you say to lose subscribers? <laughs> I said long or short, someone said short, so I went short. That's that's about it. It happens. It just mad I'm up fifteen dollars on this account. From messing around, I guess. I don't know. I used to so like Here's a little backstory is when I first started this channel and stuff, right? It was really small. Like in the spring, I had less than 200 subscribers and, you know, I, I rarely got hate, but then like sometimes, you know, you get some hate and it kind of hits you and you're like, wow, like people actually think that of me. Then you realize that no matter what you do, you're always going to have haters, like no matter what. <laughs> so you just kind of brush it off. Have you married? I am 21 and in college. I have not married. It's USD holiday. Um, we're not really trading this. We're just kind of watching, learning, and then um, the trades I took were kind of mess around trades, right? So. Yeah. US holiday. Does that does that explain kid kid guap? <laughs> Reminds me of guac. Naz is sneaking. Yeah, I'm just messing around today. Well, so I'm messing around if I'm actually trading, but uh, 
I, I do think you can still learn from price action on days like today, right? You can still watch, you can still learn. Um, no, no need to apologize. <laughs> Just explaining like why, what's going do you trade indexes on there? Uh, yeah, I just trade NASDAQ and S&P. Do you live trade when you're actually trading? Um, I will occasionally um, on Fridays. You can ask um, people in the stat discord. Um, and then on Mondays and Wednesdays, I will do like a lunch session. Um, and then sometimes I'll, I'll live trade. But normally when I'm live trading, I'm not uh, talking very much because I focus. What do you study in college? I am currently studying business finance. It's fine how people come into your channel and start giving you an attitude. Yeah, it happens. I'm not worried about it. So we'll see. We actually might get a setup here. This is what I would actually be watching. When did I start trading? I've been investing since I was 15, 16, but I've actually started day trading like uh, about a year and a half or so ago. You learn a lot. You learn everything every day. You look at Dixie. I don't. Um, personally, if I look at too many things, I get analysis paralysis and then I'm like oh well I could look this but Dixie's not and then I second guess myself right so what do I want to see here aggressive move down ideally a volume spike aggressive move back up so there's a little volume spike we'll see if we get any aggression um, um so it depends what I'm doing uh, most of the time I have my, my strategy, like run, lo raid liquidity, aggressive move up. It doesn't have to break structure. I prefer it to break structure unless there's a BPR, then I'll consider it. Like if we get a BPR right here, right. Then I will consider that. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, how many are do you usually make per month? I mean, that's tough because it depends. So. Here, we'll take a single con for the for the haters. That's good. We'll do four point stop. And we'll just buy comes back in here. This is a little bit risky, right? But we'll give it a go. If I stop out, I lose what, fifteen bucks? And if I don't I want to see these highs up into here, <laughs> I think we'll stop out of this, but that's time it's a risky entry. Yeah. So that's a that's your risky entry, right? There's no break of structure, no confirmation, and even this didn't sustain. But it's it's risky. But have you considered dropping out of college? I've considered, but I don't know. The thing is I like I wanna be I wanna meet people. Long term goal, mostly real estate would be my long term goal invest a lot into real estate so after that stop out we'll go ahead and wait for uh um some actual break of structure here but <laughs> we're still break even on the day so i don't really care how do you like sonar labs i haven't used them too much i'm just kind of experimenting but um yeah turtle soup yeah, this could be turtle soup, but sometimes soup spills, right? And soup spills, where's my stuff? So, 
Um, I already, already answered that can Canadian Pro is, uh, I want to do real estate really. You consider bias when scalping BPR? Yes and no. I would like, I prefer to have liquidity taken, right? But if we're already trending down, I mean, you can definitely just take it that way. Yeah. A one minute. We'll wait for the one minute so we don't get chopped up. Index versus real estate, which one more profit? Um, well, it's a lot easier to cash flow real estate unless you have like an algo or something running for you. Uh, take the profits from trading to real estate. That's that's ideally the plan. Um, did it take you a long time for you to lose the fear of trading? Yeah, it did. It took me like a year-ish to like kind of get over the fear of just entering trades. Like I was always fearful and anxious. Um, now it's just like, like right here, like it either hit my stop or it didn't. There's no reason to be fearful as long as you have risk management. Um, but I, it definitely helped just kind of everyone, everyone's different with their psychology and what works for them. But for me, kind of putting myself into losing scenarios on purpose did help me to realize like, oh, you can lose and it will be fine, right? So. Don't, you don't really understand what? Not sure what you mean. What made you build the confidence? Back testing. Um, this is this live stream is probably not the best video for how I trade because they're it's a bank holiday, right? Not super clean price action, and my type of setups. Um, but normally my my setup is. Like if we would have had a more aggressive movement here, I would have considered again, we got some sort of move like that, right? If we had a fair value up in there and broke structure. Turtle soup. Turtle soup is essentially you buy the deviation from the range. So when we reach under this low, you just long it expecting a reversal. Um, I've done it a few times and it works on extremes of the range and kind of when you already expect that to occur, but, um, it's definitely a little more risky, um, less confirmation. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't stream every day. I stream like once a week. Um, normally I stream on Sundays and do like a guest, but I've been busy the last two Sundays, so I kind of just did this instead. So we'll see what happens. Like a dead cat bounce. Yeah, kind of, right? Um, I don't know. I, I might have a recording of a trade I did with uh, Turtle Soup. SMT divergence point out. What time? Higher time frame? I'm assuming. What uh what SMT are you talking about here? That's up to you, Peter. Um you don't really need the one fifteen second or thirty second to trade. I just kind of enjoy it. They're kind of fun. Yeah, I'll consider streaming during market open more often. The, the one problem is I, I do have school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that is something to keep an eye out for because 
So NQ has my eye a little more than ES here. <laughs> So there is we're starting to get some displacement. You can use three minute you can use any candle time frame to trade, right? It's just personal preference. School? Yeah, I'm in university right now. Why? Uh I enjoy learning and meeting people. So here is our move higher. There we go. Oh. I'm here finally here soon. Yeah. I mean I I enjoy it. F school. The there everyone has different reasons. So would it like to see a retracement here? Just ran this high into a fair value gap. Mitigated this fair value gap here. I'd wanna see a retracement, like into this area. We'll see if that happens. Good stuff, uh, and Norm. Cap? What do you mean, cap? That I don't like school? I like to meet people. The best way to ne network is <laughs> we put into scenarios with similar people. Uh, like into classes, stuff like that. How long have you been following ICT? Uh, I have a doubt. I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I have a doubt every fair value gap has retrievement, retracement. Not every fair value gap will get a retracement, if that's what you mean. Yeah, my uh, chart color background. If you actually go to my community tab on my uh, my YouTube, it will share that. Do I? Tr I mean, it's my it's like what I do to pay bills and stuff. I do school this, and then I I do work in the stat Discord stuff like that. Imagine saying cap to someone's opinion. <laughs> yeah, happens, I guess. So, little divergence here. Right. Pop that. MQ. As in. So, might be indicative of a slight reversal here. Let's see. You should have a FAQ in your desk. Yeah, that would take a lot of time to write out, though. Yeah, I agree. Real life is about building skills. Um, I got ran over. Is it possible to trade for a living? Yeah, it is. Henry wants to be my boyfriend. <laughs> nice. Um... No, I'm I I enjoy people asking questions, especially on a day like where the price action looks like this on a fifteen second chart. Look at a five second or five minute. Not super super fun. I guess it's not too bad. No, should get some move higher. Do not drop out. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. What size account do I need to... So you can trade micros with like... I think it's like $50 margin or something. 
because it's five dollars a point. Lake my. <laughs> That's funny. Do you trade on every... No, I don't normally trade on holidays. That's why I'm not doing much. I normally don't even look at the screen. Yeah. After I get off, I'll probably scalp some for fun and then go back. Be able to see that still. And so that is your one minute fair value gap there. But I just <clears throat> kind of do it all the lower time frames. That's going to be your. You have a funded. I have two funded accounts, and then I have an options account and long-term stuff, but I'm mostly cash right now. Hey. Is it live data or delayed? It's, it's live. <laughs> That's so good. Um, I paper traded with a 25k, doubled it in four weeks, then I opened a real 1k account and lost half of it. That's because you probably were sizing differently and had, uh, it's not the absence, it's like not emotions, it's just you got to recognize your emotions, right? As long as you can, you're not going to be able to get an absence of emotions, you can't just get rid of them. Uh, do you live trade every day? No. Thoughts on trading futures with your funds versus funded? I think both have their pros and cons to it. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty easy. Like, risk to reward on a funded account is pretty good if you can pass it, right? Risk, like, what, 100-something bucks? First payout is already 10x that. You show how to enter a trade after liquidity taken. I mean, we... You didn't get a super clean setup here, or else I probably would have re-entered. But now we're putting in internal range liquidity here. Just ran that high. We'll see what happens. Are you back testing? <clears throat> this is this is live. Funded. I use this is through Elite Trader funding. Uh, real quick, go to the fifteen second chart and we'll see what we get here. I prefer NQ to reach a little lower. I could have just bought it though. I might wait for the second leg. So, see what happens here. I heard someone who is on ICT mentorship said that micro won't takes trade that don't have SMT. Now he's saying during his mentorship he talks about not taking trades solely off the SMT divergence. So when you, you're trying to determine direction, you have to look at your higher time frames, right? 
So right now, risk reward, and I would prefer to go long, right? However, we are turning down. You have to find a balance. It's a little confusing sometimes. Longing here, potentially. I'd rather have a in key reach slightly lower, but I guess it did take that low. You said that you do not like trading. Why do you? No, I said <laughs> I don't trade on like bank holidays normally, or when price action looks like this. I en I enjoy trading. <laughs> That's why I do it. So yeah, we could along there. Uh, yeah, I mean the risk reward is better right here, right? So this is our displacement range. Right, so we're looking. Right, we'd prefer to see. It's not really what I want to see. I want to see this kind of sustain into the highs. Right, not just immediately reject it. Yeah, this will be a fair value gap on the one. Right. So. There. So that is displacement higher. Now and we'll go down here. Now we're just watching. I'm going to get rid of these lines. And this one. Now we're looking for a retracement lower, right? Preferably. I'd want that, but it's like it's just going to rip. <laughs> Do you have any girls you like in your school? Uh, sure. <laughs> I mostly just focus on school, but how long do you trade? Normally I'd be done by now. Normally I trade like open and an hour after open. That's about it. I'll go to the corner here. I need to do these not on a Monday when I don't. I would say like 5% of my profits come from a Monday or less. So getting our retracement now. No, I mean, oh, years, a uh, year and a half now. One minute SPX was nice, yeah. I would personally, I don't know. I guess that's not too bad on risks, risk wise. Ideally, get a retracement in this area. Do it on Wednesday, it'd be great if you can. I got that one minute energy. Nice, dude. Where'd you learn it? YouTube. No, I would con I'd consider taking a short, on um, like a lower time frame. It's so like five second. Right, if the five second setup appeared. But right now it's bullish. Right. Technically, you do have this little BTR, but. Oh my gosh, what are up with these bots, man? And I removed them, hopefully. Um, trying to figure out wrapper head trading for the day. Should be more opportunity. I would say find when you have more of an edge, right? Like my edge is usually gone after, like I prefer to trade from, well, I'm on the five second chart. I'll leave. I prefer to trade from 9.30 to about 10.30, 11. And after that, I don't really like to trade. 
That's my personal opinion for me, but that's something you kind of have to figure out for yourself. You're actually asking questions that I won't. Yeah, ask the questions, but no one cares. Um, that's the thing about learning and just people in general. You gotta not care what people think about you. So, let me see, I just missed a few questions answering something. That's awesome to hear, chappies. Um. <laughs> How do you feel about Forex day trading? I don't trade Forex, so couldn't really answer that. <laughs> You have two fair value value outs back to back. Which one do you want to get hit? Um, I prefer to have the one deeper into a discount. But so we'll see here. This should continue lower. Really take that. We'll see what. I'm not sure exactly what assets you can trade with an ETF account um, solely because I, I just trade this, but I know you can trade like Euro futures, gold, stuff like that. Yeah, have a good one, Eddie. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You long in this one minute fair value yet? Possibly. I might look for a five minute setup within it. Or I mean a five second setup. Failure to displace should go lower. Is this a live account? This is an eval account. Follow your journal on YouTube. Where's Chappies? Ow. Oh. Do you take partials on paper trade? I don't I don't know. This isn't paper trading. Will you do a face reveal in the future? Possibly. Yo, Chappies, DM me your uh, YouTube channel and I'll give it a look. I'm short, you'll get clapped. Okay. <laughs> Eleven fifteen handle could be a Polish water balloon. I mean, yeah, could I would have preferred us to sustain these highs. We'll see what happens. Might just do a quick scalp before I get off. I do think we're going to come take this low here. Can be wrong, but I don't like how I just left those equal lows there on the five second. Yeah, I live in the US. That's awesome. Uh, DM me uh, on Twitter. Can you connect your eval to TradingView? Yeah. So, 11.30 flips and volatility comes in. 
divergence. Um, let's see if there's a good one here. So essentially, I know this is the five second, but you can see ES, this low right here, ES took it, right? And Q didn't take that same low. So that's your little bullish divergence. But I still want to see a little lower prices. All right. <clears throat> Let's report these people again. Um, who's your eval with? So I have two funded accounts. I have one that I funded with Apex and then one that I funded with uh, Elite Trader Funding. And then this is just a new eval. I just do 25Ks because then it... Um, they're pretty easy to pass. Like I passed them in a day and then um, it doesn't, I don't really need the leverage that the large counts give me, so. I'll probably get off here in like 15-ish minutes. How did you like Apex? Um, they were good other than like, I don't know, I can't trade mobile. So like if I was at school, like I couldn't trade. Um, but really where ETF sets themselves apart is their like customer service. Like they have a Discord and like they get back to you really fast, try to help you out really fast. That's where I really like them. Who can you do an eval with and connect to TradingView with? I use Ninja for Apex. Um, Elite Trader Funding. I can drop a link for you guys. Mm -mm, let me find one. There, I'll pin that so it's easier to see. Close the charts and go to the gym. I will be soon. Go to the gym quite a bit. What days are you live? It kind of depends. <clears throat> right now I've been doing Mondays just because it's easy. I might do Wednesday if I have time. I do have an exam this week on Thursday. So here's an example running internal range liquidity, right? And you look where we did we run that to. I know it's five second, but five second fair value gap there. Um, Nothing super interesting yet. I hate the login for Rhythmic. So yeah, on the nice thing about this is like, you literally just link the account, they give you a code, and that's as easy. Like it take, took me five minutes to set up versus like the two hours it took me to set up Rhythmic and Ninja. Um, so yeah, I'd say for the most part, I am happy with the integration of TradingView and TradeBate. The only thing is like, if I'm scalping these low time frames, um, it is slightly delayed, um, not too much to the normal person, but for me, um, it should. It's like a little bit. So let's see if we drop down here. Um, so you pay for your eval eval account, and then um, if you pass it, then you pay the like monthly fee, and then you can withdraw at the end of every month. Um, so, but, yeah, I want us to actually run these lows. I might just be done trading for today. Well, not really trading. I didn't really trade today even. Um, when you have free time, could you please firm how you backtest with soft forex? Yeah. Um, I will at some point. Let's see if this holds. Probably not. So there's our rip. This is where your broad information comes in handy, right? Ideally, I still, I just wanted a deeper retracement. We don't really have to get it. Like if we go to a one minute, but I would still prefer downside just to get into a little bit deeper of a discount here. Um, I'll just delete this real quick so you guys can see. But I, ideally this is all I wanted this low to be ran before going higher.
Um, let's see real quick. Are you trying to try another funding companies? I'm with FTMO. Possibly. I mean, I'm just going to probably just withdraw this and then put it into personal accounts. Um, I find TV data to be delayed a bit too compared to... Yeah, I'd say NinjaTrader is smoother. It's just like... It's more of an inconvenience sometimes. John and Daryl are still involved. I have no idea who those people are or what NatX is. LOL. Tons of lol traders in the YouTube nowadays. I don't know what you really mean by that, but all right. Long 28 a little early. Yeah. You longed, were you just FOMOing in? It's at that point you're entering in a premium. Um, so I, I don't trade the strat at all anymore because it just felt like breakout trading to me. Um, but I will use broadening formations. Um, and essentially the reason for that being is I talked about it a little bit earlier, but it goes with ICT and the fact that you run highs, you get a retracement, right? So like you can see right here, I'll use them on lower time frames. Not normally in the five second, I'm just kind of showing this to explain it. You have your little broad information there. Right. So ideally get a little pump up above here and then go lower. We'll see. Or just go lower. Shorts dusted. Uh, I don't know what NADX is, but I have not. But I do think uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, I'm probably going to hop off. Um, didn't plan on trading, and I, I guess a lot of people took offense to me doing the fun little flip a coin trade, let chat choose. So maybe I won't do that next time. Maybe I will. We'll see. I thought it was kind of fun. But if you guys have any other questions, I'll give it you know a couple minutes to get them out. Um, other than that, um, thanks for coming out, like always, you know, uh, to trade copiers. I have not used a trade copier, so I could not give any insight into that. Yeah, of course. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, uh, Chappie, send me, I don't know, did you uh, send me your YouTube channel link? Discord or YouTube or anything? Alan, please, before you leave. <laughs> uh, you're great. Have a good one. Yeah, guys, I mean, I'm going to try to... I might try to schedule these for Tuesdays. Or, I mean, not Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Just because... Mondays, I rarely even trade for the most part. Like, I, I'll pick some trades, but, like... Not normally trading very much. <laughs> yeah, glad you enjoyed it, Peter. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Uh, sweet. I'll check it out on Twitter. How do you manage your emotions once you're in a trade? That's kind of like what I talked about with like exposure therapy, essentially, is like you expose yourself to enough times of like losing that it's just like, well, I'm either going to lose or I'm going to win. So like... Obviously, I still have emotions and they're there, but like, you're either going to lose or you're going to win. So like, it happens. So Tuesdays right before, I wouldn't be able to trade Tuesdays unless it was for like 30 minutes because um, then I have to go to school. I basically get to trade the open and then uh, go to school. So. Uh, let's see. So good job all day. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not really interested. I'll probably take, I'll probably hop off this, take a scalp or two, um, and then call it a day, or even not do that. We'll see. I'll see what this does, but, um, yeah, Zenith, you're killing it on Twitter, man. Love your stuff. So, getting our move down here. We'll watch this real quick. Volume spike. This is where I'd want to see something like this. So ideally still bias to go long. 
I'd want to see an aggressive move back up here and then a retest of these lows, right? If that makes sense. So we'll see. It would look something like this. I'd want us to sustain a little higher. This isn't very convincing, but four point stop. Right. And that's not very convincing at all. Right. You can see no displacement higher. So just another reason to hop off. But um why didn't you enter long in ES? Where? Right now? Because I don't like the price action, but rather have confirmation on lower time frame. Uh, but yeah, I mean, sorry, the last this stream and then last Monday stream just weren't great. They're just not great price action days. But uh, I'll try to do one on a day where it's just more fun. Um, so I'll see you guys all later. Um, if and once again, if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or anything like that. So see you guys.